Jaron Lanier, widely considered the father of virtual reality, is not a fan of social media. He's not on Facebook, not on Twitter or Instagram either. All you can find in terms of his personal digital media is a website that looks like it was created in 1990. And of course, Lanier does not own an Oculus Quest. This does not, however, entail that Lanier is a Luddite or that he is somehow afraid of all kinds of technological development. In fact, Lanier founded the first VR company to ever exist, VPL Research, and he popularized virtual reality as the term for the modern head-mounted display. Lanier had wonderful visions for what the technology could provide humanity in the future. More persistent, however, were the nightmares of the evil potential of the technology that he himself helped bear to fruition. These nightmares are eerily similar to the vision of what Meta, the largest VR and personal data company in the world, recently announced. In his relatively recent book, The Dawn of the New Everything, Lanier takes a look back at his life as a VR entrepreneur in Silicon Valley in the 1980s. After he founded VPL Research, the first hype craze of VR started to spread through popular culture as the ultimate technological dream. In the book, Lanier details everything, from his early virtual experiments with homuncular flexibility, where he turned himself into a lobster, amongst other things, to absurd improvised live concerts with specially designed VR instruments. Lanier's grand vision for VR was that it could allow deep, true and genuine human connection, and that it could be the perfect medium for art. His worst nightmare was that it would be the perfect technology for unconscious human manipulation. Or, to quote Lanier himself, the perfect tool for the perfect, perfectly evil Skinner box. Skinner was a behavioral scientist who, amongst other things, scared a baby around animals in order to prove that it would be afraid of animals forever. Another invention of his was an experimental box for conditioning animals in laboratories. Lanier writes how he was scared witless when he learned how humans could be conditioned and brainwashed through selective feedback responses. It was then that it dawned on him, what he later referred to as the thought, that VR is the ultimate technology for a Skinner box, the perfect tool for human manipulation. Lanier writes in his book, it's clear that with good enough sensors, good enough computation, and good enough sensory feedback, a Skinner box could be implemented around the person in a waking state without that person's realizing it. Lanier summarized an equation for the terrifying outlook of the ultimate Skinner box, and it reads as follows. In other words, if we combine our ever-growing computational powers with behavioral manipulation, shit will hit the fan. Those in power of defining the behavior of the people in the box will have absolute power to bend the world to their will. The result, according to Lanier, will be catastrophic. In a recent Forbes article, Lanier is quoted, If you run the metaverse on the business model that's similar to the one that Facebook runs on, it will destroy humanity. I'm not saying that rhetorically. That is a literal and specific prediction that humanity could not survive that. The problem is that the success criteria of VR, what would be needed for it to work well, is also what is enabling its potential for evil. In order to take us into virtual worlds and answer to our interaction with it, it would have to track as much as possible of our activity. The thought of Lanier, then, is that virtual world technology is inherently the ideal apparatus for the ultimate Skinner box. A virtual world could be precisely the creepiest technology ever. Naturally, this leads us to Meta. Facebook recently announced their long-term vision as a company, symbolized by their meta name change. Apart from being a distraction from their bad reputation, the name is further meant to signify their plans to realize a metaverse. That is, a shared, persistent, virtual collective space created by a convergence of virtual reality technologies and the internet. Now, Facebook as a square on your screen is bad enough. When we have one of the most powerful companies in the world aiming to create a metaverse, the state of affairs can worsen dramatically. It's not a problem of capitalism necessarily that Facebook exerts such a negative influence on humanity. It's about the particular form of their business model, where the users are not the customers. Rather, the users with their data will be the product that Meta is selling. When this changes from a social media app to a metaverse, we must realize it also means that Meta is not a democracy. Spending increasing amounts of your life in Meta or their virtual worlds, horizon or whatever, is to spend your life in spaces where you have no voting rights and where you do not own your data. 
So in the year 2077, in Meta, when you're on your way to your NFT t-shirt store business on block 741 and found that you have been permanently banned from what can effectively be regarded as the public, good luck talking to the AI clerk ready to take your complaint. It won't believe you when you say that you haven't broken the holy laws of Meta, which incidentally are designed to maximize screen or VR time and revenue by selling your biometric data to the highest bidder. By gathering eye tracking data, heart rate and skin conductivity, because we need to track that for exercise, right? And combining this with every physical and virtual interaction, Meta will have the most valuable data sets in the world. They will learn how humans react to every conceivable stimulation, be this environment, political advertising or false information. They don't just gather this data. Their whole business model is oriented around how to utilize this data to target customers in order to convince them to alter their actions. So, while we hope that this is just done in order to make you buy the latest iPhone, absolute power corrupts. So, even if you believe that Zuckerberg has honest motives, future governments or cyberpunk guerrillas might seize control over this data set and, yeah, create a fully realized dystopia. I mean, this scenario is so classic that you can basically choose whatever dystopia you want to illustrate the case. This is Brave New World, it's 1984's Big Brother, it's The Matrix, and The Neuromancer. Now, while it is hard to fight against one of the most powerful companies in the world, there is liberation in opposition. Meta will never give the feeling of freedom that internet enthusiasts and hackers enjoy, and, as such, it goes against what many, many people around the globe had dreamt that VR would enable for them. In The Seven Rules of the Metaverse, Tony Parisi writes how the metaverse must, necessarily, and by definition, be open for everyone. Nobody controls the metaverse. While we will see numerous walled gardens paid for with personal data, our attention should go towards open experimental places secured by powerful encryption, open source, and blockchain technologies. Apart from engaging in highly warranted criticism and boycott of meta, we must also remember to constructively engage in securing the realization of immersive technologies in a way that serves humanity.